there's no human being as composed, patient, compassionate, selfless and rational as INFJs. With that, people may never have thought that they could blow up, but when they finally do, no one would ever like them. Here are 10 reasons why you'll never like the INFJ when they are angry. Number 10. They lash out and don't care what people think. INFJs may focus and be productive while fuming, but there will always be a certain point when they can no longer contain this anger. And when this happens, they can leave everyone around them shocked and speechless. However, even when INFJs are in this state, lashing out and exploding into tears, they do so deliberately. It is because they feel so much in control of their feelings and know what they're doing or saying. Even when they are most emotional, they can still rationalize their situations and experiences and aim toward achieving a certain outcome. While other personality types lash out for nothing, INFJs do so to either teach people where their boundaries are or inform them that their boundaries are crossed and never do the same again. As an INFJ, do you also lash out when things become abusive? Number 9. Their anger will catch you off guard. INFJs tend to repress their anger all the time. Although they are emotionally complex creatures, they don't want to make people uncomfortable with their intense moods. They immediately resolve problems and avoid chaos through their impressive conflict management skills, until they can't. And this is what makes them crazy emotional when they explode. Since INFJs highly value social harmony, they lean on protecting those they care about, especially the underdogs. Anyone who attempts to bully, cause unnecessary chaos, and disrupt their peace will annoy and anger them. From here, they become the opposite of what they used to be. The peace-loving, calm, relaxed and patient INFJ now becomes explosive and careless. And what makes it much scarier is when people didn't and never expected them to react that way for something that seems minor to others. The truth is, it has never been minor for the INFJ. They've only been repressing their annoyance all this time. Number 8. They isolate themselves from the world and disappear for some time. No one will like the INFJ's anger because it can ruin commitments and plans. When INFJs want to walk out, they would. They will leave the picture and let everyone else do the job without them. With their level of independence, they won't lose anything anyway. But just because INFJs are emotionally independent and detached doesn't mean they won't need someone to lean on and vent out on. They need a freedom wall and safe spaces wherein they can be themselves and express their genuine emotions. This means that sharing and expressing their anger to their loved ones or whoever they can trust can help them relieve their anxiety. It can help them soothe the rage and tension. They can do their inner work for themselves, but it is always better to have someone to lean on when their emotions become too overwhelming for them to handle. As an INFJ, do you have someone to lean on in distress? Number 7. They won't be afraid to engage in awkward confrontations. INFJs are aware and highly attuned to their anger. They understand that anger is an indicator of crossed boundaries, and thus, it should be considered a proactive emotion. It can be destructive sometimes, but they won't guilt trip themselves for other people's wrongdoings. So, they are the type of people who will acknowledge and address their anger no matter what. People that constantly deny or ignore their anger are highly passive ones. They struggle to take the smallest action to address their inner issues and resolve their problems. However, INFJs know better. 
they can mask a lot of anger, but it is often expressed at the appropriate times. When annoyed by their co-workers' actions, they reach out to them no matter how awkward it can get. They will leave them a direct message or have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them at the office. INFJs can't stand unaddressed tension. And as lovers of peace and harmony, they will always work towards obtaining a solution. Number 6. There will be a disappearing warmth. Never offend or disappoint your INFJ friend because you can't rule out the possibility that you might lose them. INFJs may stop responding to your calls or texts as actively as they used to because they want to distance themselves from all the drama you brought into their life. They will stop accepting your invitations and decline a few requests, although they will still be polite. It is all for professionalism's sake. They can be civil with you and pretend as if nothing happened, but you will notice how their warmth and energy will decrease. INFJs are normally all out with their close friends. They accompany them when they need them and lend an ear. But once you hurt them, they can give you the cold shoulder for as long as they want to. As an INFJ, does your disappearing warmth signal an end to a friendship? Number 5. There will be an unexpected door slam. INFJs are known for their brutal door slam. Well, everyone, regardless of their personality type, does door slamming on those who offended, exploited, and hurt them. However, the INFJs door slamming can be more traumatic than it seems. When they interact with people who are too toxic to deal with, they won't hesitate to cut ties with them and move forward. This specifically happens when there's a collection of disappointment and trespasses to an INFJ. This behavior isn't impulsive, but a well-thought decision to cut off destructive and toxic people in their lives. INFJs will funnel down into a realization of how much burden abusive people were causing them. So, the decision to door slam is rooted in a profound series of recollections that drives them to never look back. Number 4. They exaggerate their politeness. This may seem like a mild consequence of offending an INFJ, but it really is the harshest. Exaggerating politeness is a sign that the INFJ has already been repressing their anger for a very long time and they are signaling you to manage your tone or mood towards them. Otherwise, they can blow up anytime and dismiss you in humiliating ways. The thing is, people will never know when the INFJ is going to pull the trigger. They will never say or show it, but show subtle cues through their behavior. So, you must be sensitive enough to notice the slightest changes in the INFJ's tone and behavior towards you to prevent their impending outburst. A frustrated, annoyed, and disappointed INFJ can be unusually kind and polite. They will laugh or smile a little more. They will wear an extra-friendly facade, but in the back of their mind, they want to cut your head off. How long can you put up this false facade? Number 3. They will be enraged. INFJs will be lying if they say they have never been enraged. Although it rarely happens because of their impressive resilience, it can also be deadly when unleashed. Angered INFJs don't leave much for polite words. Instead, they express their inner dragons through physical violence and razor-sharp words. It is scarier that no one expects such shadows to come out of nowhere. No one expects their anger outbursts, so it catches most people off guard. They will throw away things and expose people's insecurities. 
They will also humiliate someone with their dirty secrets, not for attention, but to teach them a lesson. It looks like INFJs will have blackouts when triggered. Number 2. They will be extremely moody. Yes, INFJs are mentally composed, rational, and calm individuals who can sort their thoughts before saying or doing anything. However, they are completely different people when angry. They know when to be on their best behavior, but they are often swayed by how they feel in the moment. They are a bundle of intense emotions. It is usually obvious when something is bothering them, but that doesn't imply they will want to talk about it. So, they end up pushing people away and not caring at all. Sadly, this can negatively affect their most valued relationships. But as an INFJ, do you have someone who understands your intense moods? Number 1. They will shut down. A lot of things can affect how INFJs express their anger. Often, they will get more isolated, withdrawn, and stuck in their heads when in distress. They might also shut off lights and noise or find a private place they can hide away and deal with their intense emotions. Some will also shut down completely, stop talking, become passive, and stop being reactive. They do all these to allow themselves to sort out their thoughts. So, how can this be dangerous to people around? No one would like an INFJ when they shut down completely because they become different people. They will stop accommodating questions, immediately decline calls, stop doing favors, and be dismissive to almost everyone. Some people think this is a passive aggression. However, this silent stage is the INFJ's way of sorting out information through logic and intuition without getting overwhelmed by everyone's emotions. Because their anger comes at a high price, INFJs may repress or ignore the emotions that they consider inappropriate. They may also delude themselves that they feel a specific way when they are feeling the opposite way about that situation. But when they realize that anger is a mere indicator of what's okay and what's not, they will always address it. As an INFJ, how do you express your anger? Do you also express it in destructive ways?